Hey there fellow Planeswalkers, it's Steve for Collector Mania, and we are back from vacation. Pretty exciting news, <laughs> I know. Sorry I missed uh, last week's alternate Tuesday, but we are back in the saddle again. While we were gone, we did get a heck of a lot of spoilers and some really cool cards. So today, we're actually going to do a focus on Two-Headed Giant. Um, this is going to be part A, so there will be a part B that will be posted next week on alternate Tuesdays. Uh, first up, we're going to do Regna the Redeemer. So of course, the partner to this is Krav the Unredeemed. Um, it's a really cool pair. I really like black-white, of course, and playing it as a two-headed giant instead of like a dual commander where you've just got the two commanders in your deck and you're playing a black-white deck. I don't know. I think this might be kind of fun. You know, find one of your best friends or whatever and just sit down and play with them, or even somebody you don't know and just play two-headed giant with somebody. I think it's going to be pretty interesting since they are kind of pushing this two-headed giant like commander thing. I don't know where people are going to end up with it really as far as like tournaments and what whatnot. I don't know, I'm willing to keep a pair of decks dedicated to dueling that way, essentially. Um, my approach would be to build the decks so they're capable of fighting on their own, of course, but then when they partner up, you know, maybe they have like the maximum amount of synergy they possibly can. So, anyway, with all that out of the way, of course, the Two Headed Giant <laughs> rules uh, listings are a little bit uh, all over the place. There's not really a set. Um, so, I'm going to go off of what I know, and essentially that means that. In our play group, we start our life totals at 60 points. Uh, commander damage is still set at 21. Any damage that's dealt to anybody is essentially shared as a group. Same with life gain and so on and so forth. So there's all that going on. Uh, can get a little wacky, of course. Once again, that really depends on your play group, and there's not really a set for this. Hopefully, they'll come out with something at some point since they are kind of like, I guess, kind of pushing this a little bit. Anyway, let's break into the deck here real quick. So. Regna the Redeemer. She's uh, 5 colorless, 1 white, 4-4 four, four legendary creature angel. Uh, partner with Krav, of course. And then she's got flying at the beginning of each end step. If your team gain life this turn, create 2 one, one white warrior creature tokens. So, she's really powerful as a token strategy and a life gain strategy. So, just a really cool commander. Anyway, let's go ahead and break into our creatures. So, first up, we got a Mother of Runes. So this is really powerful not only for our deck, but once again, with our partner deck, we can actually protect our, our, our partner's commander, essentially, which could be really important, especially depending on if you've seen Krav, he can get pretty scary pretty fast. Then we've got a Sarah Ascendant. Of course, with the starting 60 life total, <laughs> this guy comes out pretty early and is always a 6-6 six, six flying lifelink creature that's just going to nail our opponents for a lot of damage, and that's exactly what we want. Then we've got a Soul Warden. Um, with our commander, if we gain life on our turn, that's great. If the, we gain life on our opponent's turn, that's great. Either way, it works for us. And then in a multiplayer game, this just gets insane, especially if people are playing a lot of creatures. And we've got an Ariac Champion, essentially the same thing. The only thing with this is that our partner deck can't really interact with this guy too much, since, or this chick, because she does, she does have protection from black and red, so keep that in mind. Then Grand Abolisher. <laughs> Great for playing as it on it in its own deck, but also amazing in two at a giant because this shuts down their entire response and everything, and you and your opponent have no drawback from it. Or you and your partner, sorry, have no drawback from it. Knight of the White Orchid, some little, a little bit of land ramp. Suture Priest, another great way to gain life and you know make your opponents lose life as well. Orescos Explorer, a great way to ramp. Brimaz, King of Oreskos. So as we talked about, this is a token strategy, so creating a bunch of little 1-1s one is actually really powerful for us because we've got a lot of things to buff them up you know, later on in the deck. Rune Tail Kitsu, uh, of course we're going to have a lot of life all the time, so this is just an amazing card in here. Thalia. I've got Thraven Doomsayer, interesting way to make tokens. Amiria Angel, probably one of my favorite ways to make tokens, especially because they fly. And you know, when playing lands is always something that you're going to be doing, so this just comes out and makes you a little army all on its own. Hero Blade Hold, a great way to get Battle Cry and create a lot of tokens. Audric Master Tactician. So I've seen this guy win many, many, many games, and especially with a deck like this, being able to decide where your opponents block is really important, <laughs> or if they block at all, which you know, you probably never will have them block. You just swing through with all your tiny tokens, and then all of a sudden you kill somebody with a bunch of 1-1s. One it's pretty powerful. I've got a Catcher of the True. I've been putting this in more and more decks. It's actually pretty good for a token generator and also just a really good creature. Rock's Faith Mender. Of course this has to be in here. Wall of Reverence. So think about our commander and when, the, when everything triggers, so you just stack the triggers the way you want. Gain the life and then get the tokens. Really, really good. 
Archangel of Thune. Now this is extremely powerful. This is a key card. Um, I would say this is probably one of our best win cons. Just stacking all of our creatures up and then just once again like getting those overrun effects and then killing people. It, it's going to be great. <laughs> Crested Sunmare works right into our strategy. Guy Honored Monk. This has always been one of my favorite cards. I used to play it in a Brago deck all the time and I think it's actually going to do really well here. Lara Dawn Dawnbringer. So our commander is an angel so this actually helps out quite a bit. By giving her lifelink, that's the main thing. Plus one, plus one is always great too. But just being able to swing with, in with her, gain a little bit of life, and then trigger her ability, really, really good. Queenmate Rock. Captain the Watch. Felidar Sovereign, of course, a win con. Then Vala the Preserver. Sun Titan. Get some of those smaller creatures back and enchantments and artifacts. Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. And then we're breaking into our artifacts here. One note that I did forget to say earlier is in our playgroup, we don't allow either of the decks to have a duplicate of any cards. So I chose the white deck on this pair to have the Mana Crypt instead of the Soul Ring. So if you look at it that way, it kind of balances out a little bit, especially since we're getting so much life on this side. It doesn't really matter the damage. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've got Elixir of Mortality, Skull Clamp, all those little tokens, draw a lot of cards. Lightning Greaves, Pearl Medallion, Extra Planar Lens, Oketra's Monument, Pristine Talisman, another great way to gain life, Aetherflux Reservoir, so this is essentially one of our win conditions, and it's kind of funny, if you keep your starting life total, this is a huge threat. I mean, you start at 60 life, so then you just pay 50 life, you're still at 10, and you can actually just destroy somebody, and destroy your opponents, essentially. Hedron Archive. Well of Lost Dreams, since we're getting so much life, this is a great way to draw a bunch of cards. Eldrazi Monument. So this is one of the overrun effects I was talking about. Giving all of our tiny tokens flying and indestructible and plus one is <laughs> really, really powerful. Especially since we'll continue to make those little tokens all the time. So this will work perfectly for us. Guild of Lotus, a little bit more mana ramp. And then a Mind's Eye, some card draw. And we're breaking into our enchantments. We've got an Authority of the Consoles and a great way to gain life. And keep our, our opponent's creatures tapped. Land Tax, Blind Obedience, another way to make all of our opponent's creatures come to play tapped, and Artifacts, and also it's got that extra ability, so if you don't have a life gainer, you just need to gain a little bit of life to make those tokens, Blind Obedience will work perfect. Intangible Virtue, once again we are playing a token deck, so this actually works right into our strategy. Uh, especially with some of our bigger tokens like our 4-4 four, four Angels, this makes them 5-5s five with Flying and Vigilance, that's actually pretty powerful. Lumin Luminarch Ascension, speaking of 4-4 four, four White Angels, this is going to be perfect for us together forever so I had to include this card I don't necessarily know if I would uh, put it in here other than theme I kind of I don't know I think I'm gonna have to play with this one I'm not sold on it yet so essentially it enters the battlefield you support two and supports kind of always been a weaker mechanic in my opinion you can pay one choose target creature with a counter on it when that creature dies this turn return it or return that card to its owner's hand so yeah it's kind of okay I don't know I, Depending on what's going on, I don't know if I'm going to have the mana held up. I know it actually kind of synergizes with Krav quite a bit because he does get those plus one, plus one counters, but once again, I'll have to play with it to see. Ghostly Prison. Anointed Procession. Oh, that's just a lot of tokens. <laughs> Retreat to Emeria. Cathar's Crusade. Another win con, in my opinion. Just play this, or, or the Archangel of Thune, and all of a sudden your army is just ridiculous. True Conviction. Now, once we make our army ridiculous, this is how we win the game. We just plant this down and everything has double strike and life like that. It's just ridiculous. Enlightened Tutor. Of course, a way to find all of our juicy artifacts like our Aetherflux Reservoir and so on, so on and so forth and some of our enchantments as well. Path to Exile. Sword Splashers. Forsake the Worldly. Teferi's Protection. Um, I chose this one specifically because it can actually keep our tokens around. Um, since they never technically leave the game, they actually stick around in this weird zone. I don't even know how to describe it, I just know it works. <laughs> Plus this card is just ridiculous. I mean, it not only saves us if our, you know, if our, we're going to get killed, it saves our opponent as well because their life total is our life total, so their life, life total can't change, so it's pretty powerful that way. It's, it's an interesting interaction. Fumigate. Regna's Sanction, so another new card, so three colors and a white. For each player, choose friend or foe, and I love this idea, especially for two-headed giant. 
Each friend puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature they control. Each foe chooses one untapped creature they control, then taps the rest. So that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, it's a way for all of our tokens to swing in towards the late game and just wreck somebody. I've got Righteous Confluence, so a great way to, one, make tokens, but also gain life, and then if we need to, exile some enchantments. I've got Play of the Game, so another new card, six colors, two white. It's got assists, so our uh, our partner can essentially pay some of the mana on this. Exile all non-land permanents, so could be really, you know, if it's necessary, we'll play it, um, you know, wiping the boards. And then we'll break into our lands here. First, we've got Amiria Skyrune, Secluded Step. Windbrisk Heights, Karu, Kajoran Outpost, so a great way to make tokens. I love lands that do effects like this. Ghost Quarter, Myriad Landscape, Spring Jack Pasture, just another great way to make tokens. High Market, a great way to sacrifice tokens and gain some life. And then a bunch of planes. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed this deck tech. And once again, this is only part A, so look forward to part B next week. And uh, we are planning to do quite a few of these since, you know, it's such an interesting theme to at a giant, especially for alternate Tuesdays. Um, I am also planning on doing a, I guess, uh, partner commander deck tech with these guys as well. And you'll essentially see like a mashup of these two decks and how they would work together if, you know, both these guys were one. Uh, commander group together instead of on two separate team or two separate players on the same team so anyway uh let me know how <laughs> what do you what you guys want to see with that like i said this is kind of new to me so it's kind of interesting but it's a lot of fun so as always like i said i hope you enjoyed and we will see you guys next week